This is Plant-Based Briefing, How to Cook Brown Rice, the Simplest, Healthiest, and Easiest Way, by Brigitte Jem at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I search the internet and find a variety of articles on plant-based, vegan, and eco-friendly topics, get permission, and read them to you here every weekday in about 10 minutes or less. Today's article is from Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com. She offers delicious whole food plant-based weekly meal plans to make meal planning and batch cooking easier. There's no need to figure out what's for dinner anymore. You can try a two-week meal plan for free and even become a lifetime subscriber for a really reasonable price, just over $100 US. So check that out at veganfamilykitchen.com. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How to Cook Brown Rice, The Simplest, Healthiest, and Easiest Way by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com Learning how to cook brown rice the easiest, simplest, and healthiest way can bring big health benefits. In case you aren't already convinced, I recommend watching Dr. Greger's video on the topic linked here. If what's stopping you from eating more brown rice is the inconveniently long cooking time, you need to learn how to cook brown rice in a batch session following my easy, simple, healthy method. It's really a pity and a public health catastrophe that white rice has become standard all over the world. Historically, white rice became more prized than its whole version for understandable reasons. Being so much more nutritious than white rice, brown rice was always harder to protect from eager rodents and insects and spoiled faster. However, modern food handling methods solve those problems. So why aren't we eating more of it? Ignorance of the benefits aside, the biggest reason is probably convenience. But this is about to change for you as I will teach you how to cook brown rice the easiest and healthiest way, making it a simple to dish out as a convenience item. How to cook brown rice the easy way, no special appliance required. I cook with a bunch of different types of rice, from basmati brown to bhutan red and wild rice, which actually isn't rice, but that's a topic for another day. What is the exact ratio of water to rice needed for each? I don't know, and I don't care. I just cook rice like pasta, in plenty of water. First, I bring a pot of water to a boil. Then, as I wait for the water to boil, I thoroughly rinse the rice to remove the unappealing dust. Once the water is boiling, I add the rinsed rice and set a timer for 22 minutes. I may reduce the heat a bit to keep the bubbles under control and stir once in a while. When the timer goes off, I taste the rice to make sure that it's ready. If it's hard, it needs to cook longer. If it's just tender, al dente, it's done. If it's mushy, I'll remember to check earlier next time. I turn off the heat and drain the rice through a fine mesh metal sieve, then I immediately return it to the hot pot, but off the heat, and cover with a lid. I probably get rid of about 97% of the water, but I don't bother letting it drip to the last drop. I wait 10 to 15 minutes, then fluff with a fork. Done. No looking up ratios, no brain clutter, no measuring cups, no watching the pot, no scorching, no scolding my husband as he lifts the lid. Don't uncover the rice. Note that this method does not apply to risotto, which shouldn't be rinsed at any point. You need all the starches to make it creamy. How to cook brown rice the healthy way. Aside from not having to remember the ratios corresponding to different kinds of rice, This method has another benefit. It reduces the amount of toxic arsenic found in rice. And sadly, brown rice has more of that than white, which makes it all the more important to practice safer cooking. If you haven't heard the news about arsenic in rice, no need to panic. Yes, brown rice grown in certain soils, notably those that used to grow cotton crops, contains more arsenic than is acceptable. Yes, arsenic consumption increases one's risk of lung and bladder cancer, but the risk has to be put in perspective. According to FDA calculations, only about 39 cases of those cancers per million people are related to rice-based arsenic out of a total of 90,000 lung and bladder cancer cases per million, lifetime-based, not per year, in total. Quitting smoking and bugging your elected officials for regulations that limit air and water pollution will be more effective on the whole than changing your rice cooking methods. Nevertheless, 39 cases per million for the United States and Canada together means over 15,000 people will get lung or bladder cancer from rice consumption over their lifetime. And both of those cancers are quite terrible to have. I prefer to avoid hospitals, and this method of cooking rice is both safer and easier, so why not avoid unnecessary risk? 
The toxic arsenic content of rice varies largely based on where it was grown. Some companies claim that their rice has been tested and does not contain notable amounts of arsenic. That is reassuring. However, I cannot bother to remember which origins and companies are safe and which aren't. Generally, I mistrust food labeling. Plus, I usually buy rice in bulk to reduce packaging waste, and the provenance of bulk rice is even harder to ascertain. I'll just stick to a single method to cook brown rice, which happens to be the simplest. As described in a detailed review of recent studies by Dr. Greger, rinsing then cooking brown rice in a large volume of water, as described above, reduces the arsenic content to the point where they aren't significant health threats. It's worth watching the video linked here. As you can see in the video, unfortunately, this method also reduces the amount of iron and some vitamins contained in the rice, including folate. However, if you are already eating a whole foods plant-based diet with lots of vegetables, including lots of greens and cruciferous veggies, you probably consume plenty of those vitamins already. I personally choose to have one extra piece of broccoli and not worry about it. How to cook brown rice the convenient way. Batch it and freeze it. A downside of the cook-like-pasta method to cook brown rice is that it takes even longer than the conventional ratio-based method since there's bigger volume of water to boil. Who has an hour to get rice ready on weeknights? Not me. That's why I batch cook brown rice. I thoroughly rinse four cups of brown rice using my largest pot to swish the rice in lots of water and a fine mesh metal sieve to drain. Aside from removing some of the arsenic, rinsing gets rid of dust of unknown provenance and, to my taste, yields a nicer result, less sticky grains. I find it worth my time. After the water runs clear, I let the rice rest in the fine mesh metal sieve while I bring lots of water to a boil in the big pot. I do not measure exactly, but there's approximately five to seven times more water than rice. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to bring the water to a boil, and that's when I add the rice. I give it a good stir, set the timer for 22 minutes, and move on to the next task, remembering to stir the rice every few minutes just to be safe. When it's done, I drain it through the same fine mesh metal sieve, return it to the pot, and let it steam off for a while, at least 15 minutes, often more as I'm busy cooking something else. It depends on whether I need that big pot for another dish. I fluff with a fork and distribute across labeled containers in family-sized portions. I keep whatever we'll eat in the next four days or so and freeze the rest. Voila! How to thaw the brown rice after freezing. If I think about it, I transfer the frozen rice to the fridge the night before, but I usually forget. I uncover, sprinkle with a little water, and thaw then heat in the microwave. The whole process takes about 10 minutes and yields perfect brown rice, just as good as fresh. If you do not have a microwave, reheating on the stove works great as long as your rice was previously thawed. Thawed rice is also perfect for fried rice style dishes. For a printable recipe of how to cook brown rice, see below. What about rice cookers and instant pots? I would not recommend trying this method in a rice cooker, if only because the pots aren't usually big enough to accommodate so much water. I have yet to try this method in my electric pressure cooker or instant pot. However, I've heard of others who have tried it and report success. I would personally fear that the rice would overcook while the pressure is coming down naturally. I will try it with a small quantity and update this post whenever possible. You just listened to How to Cook Brown Rice, The Simplest, Healthiest, and Easiest Way by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host, and this advice has been so helpful to me. I cook brown rice this way all the time, knowing that it's healthier and removes much of the arsenic. And it is so simple. I usually do two cups of rice in a big pot of water like I would cook pasta. I always do exactly 22 minutes because I always just do the same type of rice, stir it, turn the heat down just a bit so it won't overboil, and leave it. And 22 minutes later, drain it, dump it back in the pot, cover it, and 10 minutes later, it's absolutely perfect. This is one of those kitchen tips that I absolutely love. Makes it super easy to eat healthy brown rice while significantly reducing the arsenic. We love to use rice in tofu rice bowls, Buddha bowls, that sort of thing. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.